Okay, well, we're gonna start a video. Um, I don't know how we're gonna how I'm gonna make it. Uh, but anyways, it's a big cam four. I had problems in with injectors when I bought it was smoking. Um, I had an air to air problem. The air to air cooler was leaking. And it was causing excessive smoke, so I bought a used one. I mean, these things are a fortune to buy brand new. So I thought, well, let's take it off a good used one. Well, guess what? I didn't get a good used one. The symptoms of the truck were... It was running just fine when I got those injectors in. And I put that air-to-air -air on. It had smoothed out. There was a little metal in the oil on the plug and I didn't we figured it was a cam and I was told by a lot of guys to just run it so that's what I did and it lasted a half a year that way yeah you do more damage whatever I needed the money I have to run the truck truck doesn't make any money so I got the pan off this is how at least and to check to see where the, what the cam looked like and you can see that that lobe is shot on number two those lobes are fine you can just see the beginning of number four and I can't didn't really but I think I can get it up in there yeah there's number two. She's absolutely shot. Um, follower. And the cam. So. I get to do a cam, <clears throat> and luckily, I know a guy, Mr. Cummins himself, who's got the tooling to do this, so radiator comes out, accessory drive comes off, hood comes off, obviously, got to take... PT pump off with air compressor, accessory drive comes off, dampener comes out, accessory drive cover comes off, and then we can get to the cam. I have to pull the followers. I'm not going to pull my rocker boxes. I've had them off before when I did the injectors the first time, and I'm just going to pull push rods, check push rods. Uh, that all is going to stay on, and I'm just going to pull push rods, and then we're going to see how this goes. So I'll do a kind of a Maybe a time frame on this and see how it goes for I'm gonna put the points that were difficult for me um, especially with this whole jig setup I've never ran the jig on these to set the shims for the rockers for the followers on this thing so that's gonna be something I'll be showing on I know that there's stuff on the internet um, but I couldn't really follow it, so I'm going to describe at least the way that I read it in the book and the way that I'm going to be shown how to do it by a guy, so. Well, the cam is out. Oh. Followers are out. It's late. I want to go home. There's the cam. I'm not in the prime condition. Shop is messy, but it is what it is. The bushings, you can see, they're worn. They're coming out. So, yeah, right on. Now it's just ordering and getting it back. Yeah, right on. Okay, well, we got the followers off everything's can't remember where i left this off but i have the cam removal 
bushing tool and insulation tool. It's quite a large tool. It's bigger than I thought it was. This is the one that gets number seven out. Or however many bushings are in there. That thing expands out. And then we're able to pull it on the blind hole on the last one. But uh, I'm just marking them as they come out. And the orientation of which they come out. Just because I think there are some different bushings in there that uh, that it takes. I'm not positive. I thought there was a couple of different ones, but I'm just going to keep going at it. I've changed out my tool, and well, we'll just keep doing it. <clears throat> it's a hot day. Sam's supposed to show up sometime today. Or tomorrow, not sure. I don't know. I don't think it does. The crank's not going to get in my way. <laughs> this one's a little, this one's bigger. Mark number him. Orientation. So this thing has a bearing inside of it, and it slides in, and then you twist it to expand it, and it catches that back. Okay, so. <clears throat> this is for number seven. So this sets in place. We're gonna tighten that nut to remove it, but and frames they're so dirty I'm gonna catch flack for this but it's, luckily it's my truck so i don't care so it's got the handle there and all we're gonna do is we spin that and that'll expand that out and catch the lip on the back side and pull it right on out pretty cool really cool thank you mr hawker for Letting me catching the inside of it I wanted to get in the full the full bearing so I, I didn't get a push back far enough in there I thought I did and I, I Okay, the alignment pin should be, this is 
one, two, four, and six. So if I do my alignment pen here, Well, I didn't, I don't think I got it all, but the cam bearings are all installed. So I'm waiting for the cam to show up. <clears throat> got a new keyway for it. Don't want to use the old one, obviously. So I got a new keyway. New thrust washer. <clears throat> and there's the old cam. Man, that thing just hammered. I'm hoping this thing works out all right. But uh, after we get it all back together, going to roll rods and mains in it. We decided why not since it's off. And then we're going to pressure test the system because we had coolant in our oil filter. So see how that goes once we get it all back together. She went right on, just slid, slid right on. Bill, thank you for the uh, idea about the barbecue. It worked fantastically. Now I just need to make sure this thing cools correctly.
So, we found top dead center on the left gauge. Obviously, that's the injector port. There's top dead center. So I'm gonna go past top dead center. 90 degrees. I've already zeroed that gauge. Just to check we're on the same lobe, I'm gonna go all the way to bottom dead center and we don't, we're not continually moving. So I know I'm on the right lobe for zeroing my cam gauge. Now I'm gonna go back watching my cam gauge and my piston gauge. I'm gonna go back to top dead center. Okay, there's top dead center. Now I'm gonna go 250 past top dead center, paying attention how many turns both gauges are doing. That's two and a half turns for my left, and I wanna be 101, but I just need to pay attention how many turns on my right. So there's one turn on the left, two turns on the left, that's one turn on the right, and about, we need to just go more than 50. We'll go right at 50, okay. Now I need to take it back 47 thousandths or 203, and then that'll be my money mark for my timing. I need to be 101. So I go back three. There's three, and I am a half off, I'm a half off, oh, I smudged it, sorry. I don't think it's gonna go. I'm just a tick under on my injector, I'm good. I'm good enough, because it says in the CPL book I can be 100 to 102, that's pretty much dead nuts. I got one, two at 101, and three is at 100 is at one thousandths or a hundred, whatever, however you want to say it. But that is how I timed this motor. I hope I did it right. Um, but uh, that's how it's, at least how, how I did it. This is my timing tool that I have. It's a Kentmore, it's not even mine. I borrowed it from a, uh, a friend of mine. A couple things on setting this one up is I had to shim it a little bit differently to get the right protrusion and then making sure that I don't zero out my gauge and break it. So when you're doing these, just take your time. And that's the biggest thing is just making sure that you have enough travel on these plungers, at least with this one. The injector, not so much. It was just on the cam. It had a spacer plate that went in here, but it was too big. I don't know what was going on with that. This has an extensions on it, but I just wanted to get enough. It wasn't in a, this wouldn't come far enough down. Uh, and then just make sure your push rods aren't bent, you know, twirl them around, make sure that they're not bent. This one's not jumping at all. And it's pretty, it's just a little time consuming. Just taking out shims, putting them back in. If you have a book, it even tells you how many thousandths to that the shims are when you remove them, how many thousands it'll take out of your gauges. And so, I mean, I wouldn't do this without having a book, that's for sure. But anyways, that's how I timed, uh, I timed this big cam. It'll be kind of confusing. I don't know how I'll put this video together, if it's even gonna be worth putting together or not. Um, it might just be more confusing to some people, but I'll at least do what I did on it. Uh, and what I saw, I just copied pics, Pittsburgh Power. They have a great video. Um, can't remember the gentleman's name. Amazing, because I was able to do it because of that. So thank you to Pittsburgh Power for telling me how to do this motor. That was awesome. And everybody on Facebook, that 855 Cummins uh, group. Invaluable. Great guys on there. Thank you very much for helping me on this project.
sweating blood. She's running. Got great oil pressure. 40 pounds. The tick is gone. And the best part about it, there's no smoke.